verse 12, and Jesus the Lord says, Now, therefore, go. If everyone can repeat with me and say, Now, therefore, go. And I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. I just want to make a couple of statements before we get into the word of the Lord a little bit more. I know that this church is destined to have a revival. I know that this church is a revival church. I know this church is still embarking on great territories that it's ever embarked before. I know it's the will of God that in 2021 it will be the greatest year for the Rock Church than it ever has been before. I know that you have been in the past, but I just got the feeling that God is not going to be around for us to fly. I just know that every single person believes inside of their being that there is still more to be done. Spirituality. It reminds us that God began to speak to Moses. It was a spirit. 
And in verses 2 through verses 9, we see that God began to address sign after sign after sign after sign. That he would perform in front of a people. See, but these signs were not truly signs for the people. These signs were not so that if the people didn't believe because God had already said that they would believe. But it was Moses' lack of faith and he was trusting the word of the Lord. Moses began to exasperate God into doing something that he wasn't really interested in doing. And he began to waste some valuable time that God had for him. He should have just went. When God said now that you will go, and when God had given him the word, I don't know about you, I don't know about you, but God had told me, I promise you victory, and I promise you survival. And if you know that the moment that you said it, and if you will say these words, then the law will come crumbling down. I would like to think that if I was placed in Moses' position, that I would have ran to Egypt. I would have ran to my father and said, I gotta go. I gotta go. Plot 
gave some fold for me. See, this story called Don Quixote, for those of you that have not read it, it starts with a man that was just four dudes as, as his noble. And, and that who was called the Hidalgo. And this noble was, was someone who began to read a lot of fictional stories about chivalry. And he began to read a lot of romances about how chivalry needed to be revived. And he read the stories of the knights. They were these wonderful dramas that he began to read and read and read and read until finally all the things that he began to read started to change his mind. This little man that he called Sancho Panza, it was now his swire. And they started off as this normal man, but little by little, the more the donkey held it began to read, and his mind was shifted, and he started to believe that he was living in the very novels that he had read. His whole entire purpose of life began to change because he was so wrapped up in what he was reading. He was so wrapped up in what he was saying that he would have these epic battles. He would go out into the field and he was going to revive chivalry because if he could die, he and his flyer would go out and they would rid the world of everything evil, everything bad, and they would go out into the valley and they would have the most epic of battles and get some strategies. It would be something of, of war, it would be something that would just leave you in awe. See, but the more that he began to read, the more that he lost his mind. Because Don Quixote was as a battle, real dragons. Don Quixote was as fighting real wars. He was not a real knight, and his squire was nothing but a little chubby man. And he was out in the field, wasting his life away as he began to fight windmills. And he would fight these windmills. And they were never, ever dragons. And I would like to pose the thought as to how many times God begins to give us his call and God begins to say, Son of Joe, that we come to God and we begin to fight things that don't really exist. We begin to engage with thoughts that begin to delay the destiny that God has laid before us. For we allow our past to hold us as we begin to fight out on the valley. And God said it's time for you to be a part of the revival that I'm calling you to be a part of in this city. That we're sitting there in the valley with our past in our mind. And we pull out a sword and we begin to fight dragons. When in reality, they're not really dragons. How many times do we allow condemnation to have a foothold on us? We begin to battle these dragons that aren't really there. Wasting our time going in circles to fight and thinking that we're never there. Thank you.
Because most 
personal walk with God that there have been more distractions to than me in these first couple of days than ever before. There have been more things swirling around in my mind of decisions that I should make about something that probably won't even happen for some probably a long amount of time. There are so many things that I can sit on and I can ponder on and I can munch on and see what the meaning of it is. But I personally believe that in the year of 2021, that God has called us as a church to proceed and to act in one of the most greatest times of personal evangelism. I believe that God has changed the construct of the way of the being church. And that God is asking us the question, will you go and will you be what I have called you to be in the house, in the streets, in the conversation? Come on, everybody, I'm on your social media. Will you be what God has called you to be? Come on, we've got to realize and what we are focused and called. I believe not only is it going to be some of the greatest times of personal evangelism, but I believe that God is going to be pouring out the gifts of the Spirit in ways that we have not seen. I believe it is the will of God that young men and young women begin to lock themselves in the prayer room and to receive visions and to not begin to move on them. So God says, why don't you just start a Bible study? Open my back on there and flow. Yeah. 